We're starting this week off with a bang. Boy oh boy do I have something pretty cool to show you. On this channel, most of the time I talk about singular AIs. I'll talk about Dolly 2 for example was popular for a while, or Mid Journey was popular for a while. I never really talk about multiple AIs combining together to make one thing. Well, I actually really do like technology like that, so that's what we're looking at today. This is an AI tool that combines Dolly 2 and GPT-3 together to make one thing. And it's a fantastic demonstration of what you can do when you combine more than one AI together. Viewers at home, this is Tome. Unintentional rhyming aside, this is basically an AI generator for presentations. It uses GPT-3 and Dolly 2, both technologies by OpenAI. This one was simply create a presentation about pandas. Pandas, an epic journey. What are pandas? Where do pandas live? What do pandas eat? Panda conservation, panda facts, and conclusion. Apparently, we, the image just didn't generate for this first slide here. However, I guarantee this is a problem on OpenAI's end because I've done a little bit of testing with Dolly 2 lately and it would sometimes not give me images at all. So, yeah, work on your servers, OpenAI. Where do pandas live? And now actually we get to see finally an image. Pandas are found in the mountains of central and western China. Various habitats, dense forests, high altitude meadows. And so this image here that we actually got as a part of the slide reflects what this says. The panda is completely alone and he does seem to be in some sort of a forest, possibly in the mountains. And it's a pretty nice generation, I think, nonetheless, and it's accurate. This one is clearly supposed to be kind of a photo, but it's not really the best Dolly 2 generation, if you ask me. What do pandas eat? And it says, you know, pandas are herbivores, eat mostly plants. One problem I'm already seeing is that this first slide says they're omnivores and that this third one says they're primarily herbivores. So there's some kind of conflicting information here. It's not too serious, though. Anyways, obviously this image matches what this statement is. He's eating some plants, it seems to be. If only we could hook this thing up to mid-journey, right? Or better yet, Deep Floyd's IF model, which I'll hopefully be able to show you guys a little bit more properly soon. Anyways, then it goes into panda conservation. Talks about how they are endangered and uh, how they can be put into zoos and conservation centers. So obviously this is an image of the panda in the conservation center. And then it gives you some basic panda facts and we get like a panda rolling around in the grass and then another panda. And then they finally have another conclusion with just a basic image of a panda. And they talk about how that's an iconic species and all this. And I do have to say, obviously, I'm not going to read through all of this writing, but it actually does a pretty great job about writing all of this. Of course, actually, the whole thing is editable. You can edit all of the different details and correct facts that it might have got wrong. And I highly suggest you guys do that if you are actually going to use this thing to make presentations. But nevertheless, it's actually a really great little presentation tool on top of the AI magic. But the AI magic is what intrigues me the most. You do start out with 500 credits, which is pretty good. I used 15 credits already to create that panda generation. If I had this in high school, I definitely would be using it. But let's generate some more presentations because, man, that is just way too fun. Let's try to throw this thing for a loop. Let's make a story instead, by the way, because you can do presentation, presentation outlines, or stories. So let's switch to story, and we'll do the art style in automatic. I think that's the most fun. And create a story here. The lemon character trying to find the fruit love of his life. Create me a story, please. The search for fruit love. A lemon character's journey. We've got an outline here. The search begins. A clue. The final step. The celebration. The journey home. The legacy. Oh, okay. He's, he's a pretty cute little guy right there. Look at him. The search begins. Lemon character had been searching for the fruit love of his life for years. He had heard stories of a special someone out there, but had never seen them. Finally, he decided to take a chance and set out on a journey. He packed his bags and set off. He was determined to find the one he'd been dreaming of. He traveled through forests, over rivers, and across deserts looking for any sign of his special someone. He was never deterred and kept searching with hope in his heart. That is truly magical right there. A clue. One day, Lemon Character was taking a break in a small village. He heard a rumor. Someone had seen a mysterious figure who matched the description of the one Lemon Character was looking for. He apparently already knew what his uh, future wife was going to be. He followed the clues and eventually found himself in a distant kingdom. He was so close to finding the one he had been searching for. Lemon character decided to take a risk and ask around. He spoke to the locals and eventually found a clue. So we have an image generated here, but 
I think uh, it needs to be like resized or something or yeah, it's just his body here is cut off, but we can clearly see he's in like a village market. It actually does look like a good generation. It's just the framing's bad. Oh, the final step there. There are the lemon characters right there together. He followed the clues, eventually found himself in a castle. He was close to finding the one he'd been looking for. He heard a voice call out to him. And they embraced the, and the lemon character knew he had finally found the fruit love of his life. He was full of the joy and they lived happily ever after. This one, the image still would not generate again. This issue needs to be sorted out. I do believe this is an issue with OpenAI's API just not generating because of server overload. They celebrated their reunion with a grand feast, shared a dance, and everyone was happy and celebrating. And as you can see, this is apparently them uh, journeying home. It's a pretty decent generation. It's getting there. And then the, the legacy, and here they are kissing on top of a mountain behind the sun, which is good. Uh, they lived a long and happy life together. They shared their story with everyone. Their story became a legend, and it inspired many others to take a chance and search for the one they had been dreaming of. That's actually quite sweet. I do actually really like that. They encouraged people to never give up on finding true love. They were remembered for their courage and their love, and they lived happily ever after. Wow, what a fantastic story it had generated. Pretty good, honestly. I think the writing's definitely the strongest, too, because Dolly, too, sometimes really isn't the best, especially when prompts are being auto-generated. But honestly, all in all, this is super impressive and really cool to see. All right, we're going to do another presentation now, and this is going to be how to build anti-gravity boots. Take flight, crafting your own anti-gravity boots. Introduction. Step 1. Gather materials. Step 2. Build the boots. Step 3. Attach the power source. And step 4. Test the boots. And then there's a conclusion. Of course, well, gravity boots aren't really a thing, so how has the AI materialized this into something that could be plausible with images? Introduction. Anti-gravity boots are a type of footwear that allow the wearer to defy gravity and walk on walls and ceilings. The technology has been around since the 1970s, apparently, and has been used in movies, video games, and even real-life applications. This guide will provide a step-by-step -step instruction. Process of building anti-gravity boots requires some knowledge of physics and engineering. It's important to have the basic understanding of the principles of magnetism and electricity, as well as the ability to work with tools and materials such as metal and plastic. Additionally, it is important to have access to a reliable source of power, such as a battery or generator. And then I guess these are some pictures of some anti-gravity boots, which are pretty futuristic and cool looking, I think. All right, so the first step here is to gather materials. I guess we're going to need an electromagnet, power source, and any other materials necessary for the construction of the boots. Oh, a little vague there. You can get the electromagnet at a hardware store online. The power source can be a battery or generator. And apparently the power source has to be powerful enough to power the electromagnet. Build the boots. This is actually a pretty cool image here. So we have to now build the boots. This involves attaching the electromagnet to the sole of the boot and connecting it to the power source. And apparently they need to be able to lift the wearer off the ground. All of these images are pretty cool though, I will say. And this is actually like a repeat paragraph of the previous one, which is kind of weird. And then testing the boots, turning on the power source and seeing if the they can lift off the ground. Yeah, that's the same thing they said in all three of these slides, which is interesting. Turn off the power source when not in use as the boots can be a hazard if it left on for too long. I don't know, it has some sort of knowledge of anti-gravity boots that we don't have. Conclusion. It's a complex process that requires knowledge of physics and engineering. With the right knowledge and materials, anyone can build their own anti-gravity boots and walk on walls and ceilings. Wow, how amazing. The, uh, the wording here has been giving me chat GPT vibes the whole way through. Now I would like a guide on becoming the Pope. The Road to the Papacy, a step-by-step -step guide. Step 1, education and training. Step 2, become a priest. Step 3, become a bishop. Step 4, become a cardinal. Step 5, election. Step 6, papal inauguration. A step-by-step -step guide to becoming the Pope. Education and training. Pope is a leader of the Catholic Church. Deep understanding of religion is necessary to become the Pope, obviously. Obtaining a degree in theology is a great start. And learning the basics of the Catholic faith. Formal education, experience in the church, working in a parish or volunteering. And then they have an image, I guess, that's supposed to represent something religious, although it doesn't really look very religious to me. This is just kind of like a very basic random image. And uh, yeah, this one's also, again, very like magical and mystical. I would not consider this image very religious. Becoming a priest is the next step here. In order to become the Pope, one must first become a priest. Seminary school, studying for several years. 
gaining knowledge and experience serving in a church. It's important to demonstrate leadership skills and commitment to the church. Step three, become a bishop. Apparently, this is what happens when you become a bishop. Becoming a bishop is the next step after you are already a priest. Deep understanding of the church and its teachings, as well as a strong commitment to the church and its mission. Responsibility of appointing priests and serving in parishes. Becoming a cardinal is the next step. Cardinals are appointed by the Pope themselves. Cardinals have the responsibility of electing the Pope. And step five is being elected Pope. So you have to get yourself elected by the College of Cardinals. Lengthy process that involves prayer, deliberation, and voting. Election is sacred process taken very seriously. But if you just follow this guide, you'll get there. Papal inauguration. Once elected, the post must be inaugurated. Formal ceremony, prayer, blessing, swearing of an oath. Important to demonstrate leadership and commitment to the church. Well, folks, I mean, technically this is not wrong. Write me a story about how ants took over the world. The ant's great conquest. The rise of the ants. The ant's reign. The ant's legacy. The ant's wisdom. The end of an era. The future of the ants. The rise of the ants. The ants were small and insignificant, but their ambition was big. They were determined to take over the world and no one could stop them. The ants worked together to build an empire. Slowly but surely, they created a vast network of tunnels and dwellings and had never stopped growing. The ants became a force to be reckoned with. Their strength, intelligence, and resilience. They eventually conquered the world. The ants reign. Wow, look at this futuristic city apparently run by ants. They took over the world. They built cities, monuments, structures. Their influence was everywhere. The ants were wise and powerful rulers. They established laws and systems that kept their empire running smoothly. They were a force to be reckoned with. Benevolent rulers and their reign was peaceful and prosperous. Wow. Uh, they brought progress and prosperity to the world. Wow, look at this beautiful futuristic city apparently created all by the ants. Wow. GPT-3 loves ants. They brought progress and prosperity. Their legacy will live on forever. They've taken over the world. No one could take it back. Their greatest gift was their wisdom. They taught the world how to work together and think for itself and live in harmony with nature. And yeah, these are some pretty cool like ant structures, I think, actually. I really do like the uh, designs here. Again, one thing I am noticing is that this thing repeats itself quite a lot. End of an era, their reign came to an end. The power of unity and importance working together. Future of the ants. Again, yeah, this is all just repeat of stuff that has already been said. So that is one thing I am noticing with this AI is that it continuously is repeating itself. Getting accustomed to living in a world ruled by ants. Ants rule the world, adapting to a new normal. The ant revolution, getting acquainted, living in harmony, the benefits of ant rule, adapting to the new world, the future of ant rule. The ant revolution. Wow, look at these crazy ant structures. The world has changed drastically. Ants are now in control and humans are the minority. We must adapt to their rules and regulations to survive in this new world. The ant population is incredibly organized and efficient. They have created a complex system of laws and regulations that we must follow to ensure our safety. We must learn to communicate with them and understanding their culture and make sure we are abiding by their rules. Getting acquainted. I see like some hands and a mystical ant thing. I wish Dolly 2 is just a little bit better because this would be so much funnier. Getting accustomed to living in a world ruled by ants can be difficult at first. We must learn to interact with them in a respectful and peaceful manner to ensure our safety. We must also learn their language. Apparently they have their own language and customs. This can be a challenge, but with patience and dedication, we can learn to understand and appreciate ant culture. We all must also learn to live in harmony with them as they are now our neighbors. Oh, look at this unified ant thing. How beautiful. Living in harmony with the ants is essential for our survival. We must learn to coexist peacefully and understand their culture and customs. We must be mindful to their rules and regulations. Breaking them can have serious consequences. We gotta appreciate ant culture and their way of life, their complexity and of their society and the beauty of their language and customs. We have to respect their decisions and opinions. They're our leaders. The benefits of ant rule. Okay, there's some upsides to this. Living in a world ruled by ants has many benefits. Their organization and efficiency has created a safe and secure society for us to live in. That's actually pretty nice. We must learn to appreciate their culture and the way of life. It has allowed us to thrive in this new world. Again, there's some repeat happening over here. But yeah, you can sort of see the people up top and all of the ants down. Oh, I accidentally just adjusted things. Yeah, you can see you can actually pretty easily adjust all of this stuff. 
But yeah, you can see just the circle of ants down below and the humans all just happily unified together. It's so funny. Adapting to the new world, a very similar image here. Communicate them. And yeah, this is just a bunch of repeat stuff, pretty much. The future of ant world rule. It's uh, uncertain what the future is. And then again, a bunch of repeat stuff here. So yeah, it's repeating itself a lot here, especially with this one we saw and the last one. But we got to say the AI just loves ants. It's interesting how positive it, it is towards the ants. It doesn't want to say anything negative about them. So maybe maybe ant rule is coming in the future and we must be scared. And finally, to end the ant saga, crushing the ants of the world, a how-to guide. The ant invasion, gathering weapons, organizing an army, the final battle, victory conclusion. Oh my god, we have the ants battling here. The ant invasion. The world is in chaos. Ants have taken over and are ruling with an iron fist. Their numbers are growing and they are relentless in their pursuit of domination. It is up to us to take back the world and restore order. We must unite and come up with a plan to overthrow the ant rulers. It won't be easy, but with courage and determination, it can be done. We must come up with a strategy to outsmart the ants and reclaim our planet. All right, step one, gathering weapons. As you can see, I love this image of this guy with a bunch of weapons. He's gathering. He's so happy to, and ready to fight the ants. We must arm ourselves with the best weapons and armor available. We must craft a variety of weapons to use against the ants, from spears to swords to bows and arrows. Wow, they really took all of the technology from us, huh? We must also create the armor that will protect us from the ants' acidic spray that they apparently possess. Apparently, they can go and just spray us with acid. We must also find ways to outsmart the ants. We study their behavior and figure out their weaknesses. We must use our intelligence to gain the upper hand and take back our world. Organizing an army. I love this image of apparently like the ant ruler and his army. We must organize an army to fight the ants. We must recruit brave warriors from all over the world and train them in the art of war. We have to find ways to unite the people of the world and create a unified front against the ants. We have to use our resources wisely, okay? We can't be crazy with this stuff. We gotta use the environment to our advantage as well and create traps and obstacles for the ants. We must also find ways to use the ants' own weapons against them. And now we have the final battle, and apparently this is a the human battling up against the ants, and there's just ants flying around everywhere. This is a crazy image it's generated. We must prepare for the final battle. Use our weapons and our wits to take down the ants and reclaim the world. We must never give up and never surrender. The battle will be long and hard, but in the end, we will prevail. We must unite and fight back. And then we have victory here, and I don't know, it's confusing humans and ants here somehow, but apparently this is, this is what we'll look like when we take back our world from the ants. In the end, we will emerge victorious and take back our world. We will be remembered as the heroes who saved the world from the ant invasion. Our courage and determination will be remembered for generations to come. Conclusion. The ants have been defeated and order has been restored. We have taken back our world and we must never forget the struggle. Yeah, there's just some repeat information again through here, but I do like this image. These images are among some of the best we've seen so far today, and I just love the, the people just all happily standing watching the sunset as they finally have won against the ant battle, but I love the ants wearing armor and the people suiting up and gearing for ant war. Just really some hilarious stuff nonetheless. This has just been way too much fun. 500 free credits is plenty enough for you guys to play around with this one. If you make any funny stories, please, please share them to my Discord. I would love to read them. So much fun I've had with this thing today. In terms of getting more credits right now, they don't even have like a way for you to buy them, I don't think, unless I'm missing something. But they do have a referral program where everyone who signs up with your code gets 100 credits. So I suppose I will link that in the description for you guys uh, to click and try this thing out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.